Now, we're talking about praise and worship is a weapon. And that we're in a fight of faith. If we don't use weapons, then you get pushed around a lot. You find that you're almost like you're a victim to your circumstances. That if you, things are going well, you're good. If things are tough, you're, you're not doing well. But you've been given weapons. And the thing about weapons is if you don't know how to use them, or you don't know when to use them, then a lot of times they're useless. If you have weapons to protect things and you don't use them, then, then you begin to become a victim to the circumstances. And one of the things about praise and worship is that a lot of people only use it when things are going well. Oh, God, thank you for this day. I mean, everything is just great. I thank you so much for how my boss noticed my hard work. I thank you for how I didn't get blocked up in traffic. And I came home and people were cooperating. Praise you, God. And we're praising God. A lot of times we give God to praise when things are going well. But when things are not going well, when they're discouraging, when they're painful, when they're hard, sometimes we're not praising God. And that's when we need to praise God the most because right in that moment, those negative things are trying to come in and begin to oppress us, to affect our thinking, to affect our mindset, to affect our attitude, to affect our perspective. They're trying to begin to paint a picture that is losing hope, that is stealing our joy, and that is robbing us of peace. And if we don't use praise and worship when we're in the hard times, then we're not using our weapon the way it was meant to be used. Praise is not supposed to be the caboose that just follows whatever happens. It's meant to be the engine that drives the train that makes things happen. Your faith, your hope, your courage all come when you put your focus on the Lord and begin to acknowledge who he is. As we face trials and difficulties in our life, praising, trusting God enables us to rise above them, to begin to gain God's perspective, to begin to have God's faith that doesn't matter what is against us, he is greater than what is coming against us. Colossians chapter 2 verse 7 says this, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith. As you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. He's saying the way you get established and abound in faith is through thanksgiving. No thanksgiving, no abounding faith. And I want to ask you a question. Is your faith kind of up and down, tossed about? Then that means that we're not walking with using the weapon of praise throughout our day. That we're literally victims to our circumstances. If you're not praising God and thanking God, reminding yourself, renewing your mind to who he is, what he's done before and what he'll do now, if you're not renewing your mind to that, then your mind is beginning to fall victim to discouragement, fear, doubt, self-pity, complaining, negativity. Those things begin to oppress us. They literally feel like they suffocate. So then you feel like, all right, I get up the next day, I don't feel like I have energy. I don't feel like I have a fight in me. Why? Because you've lost focus of God. And now all you can see is the dark and the dreary. You see, let me put up this slide here. Praise affects you. Praise affects the enemy. And praise affects God. Hear me. It affects you, your body, your soul, your spirit. When you're focused on God, when you're trusting God, when you're realizing nothing is greater than him, he is faithful and true. He will never leave me or forsake me. He adopted me and brought me into his family. The one that is in me is greater than the one that is in the world. No weapon formed against me can prosper because he's put a shield before me. He's my rear God. He's the rock underneath my feet. He was faithful to Abraham. He was faithful to Moses. He was faithful to David. He'll be faithful to me. He's a covenant keeping God. <clears throat> when you begin to focus on that, something begins to lift in your spirit. 
your perspective begins to become more clear. Hey, wait a minute. These people are against me, but God is greater than those people. They don't hold my destiny. He holds my destiny. They may be trying to bring me down, but he is the one that will surely see the purposes he created me for accomplished. Your perspective changes. You realize if you only praise God when things are easy, then you're not using the weapon as it was because it affects your whole being. It also affects the enemy. There's many times I've been praising God because I felt like things, literally, you need to remind yourself, this isn't like I feel down. No, no, no. Feelings of discouragement are coming against me. Hear me. You own the down like that's who you are, then it will own you. But when you realize, as the Bible said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. We're not fighting circumstances. There are forces trying to use the negative situations to beat us down. And when we begin to lift up who God is, when we begin to exalt the greatness, the goodness, the, the unfailing love of our God, it begins to push back those things that are trying to push us down. I mean, literally, the Bible talks about how the enemy retreats as we begin to praise the Lord. And praise not only affects us and the enemy, but it draws the presence of God. I want you to understand this. God is spirit. We're living in a physical realm. But praise is opening the gateway between the spiritual realm and inviting him to come and touch the physical realm. When the presence of God comes, the wisdom of God comes. The strength of God comes. The peace of God comes. The joy of God comes. You begin to realize resources of heaven are touching you in the physical realm. Praise is a weapon. It affects me. It pushes back the enemy. And it begins to draw the presence of God. Hallelujah. Everybody knows praise is good. But so many people even come into a worship service and don't praise. Come on, that's like going to a restaurant and just looking around the room. Smelling the smells. You come into worship to worship. I mean, sincerely, there are times I, I come into worship knowing, Lord, I can feel things pushing against me, so I'm going to come and press into you so they can begin to be pushed away. We're not victims to these moods, these attitudes, these negativity, this fear, this griping. We really know those are forces trying to push me back. I have a weapon against them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we don't praise, what do we do instead? Complain, pity, feed discouragement, speak against people. We exalt our fears instead of exalting our God. Come on, think about it. We can't wait to tell somebody how bad we got it. I mean, sincerely, I, I, I've watched this many times when you travel. Soon as one negative announcement, half the plane picks up their phone to call somebody. Yeah, we're stalled here again. It's been all day we've been stuck in this place. It's like instead of having our focus on the Lord, we're feeding the enemy's attacks against us. We're feeding the complaining. We're feeding the griping. We're feeding the negativity. And it's a trap. It literally puts us in a trap where now our thoughts are getting darker. Our feelings are getting more negative. Our focus is more away from the Lord. Praise is what gets us through the tribulation and the trials. It's what draws us to God, strengthens and renews our spirit, begins to bring us back to my God is faithful. I mean, you honestly realize sometimes when you're in that battle, it feels hopeless or discouraging or fearful, and I'll press through to praise, and I begin to really be reminded in my spirit, no, my God is good. My God is good. He who began a work in me will see it through. 
When I get through and I begin to really take hold of who he is, I realize this isn't that big a deal. You, you realize you're being deceived when you sit in that negative thoughts. You're being fooled when you sit there and focus on the things instead of focusing on him. And that's what the enemy does. That's the reason we need this weapon. Hallelujah. I've told you many times, in my 20s, even into my, part of my early 30s, I struggled with depression. I did not praise God when things were hard. I thought it was fake. Are you knowing what I'm saying? I don't feel hopeful, so when I'm sitting here saying, oh, God, I put my hope in you, it feels fake. So why did I think that way? Because I was walking by sight and not by faith. I was putting my eyes on my circumstances, not on my God. So on my circumstances, I had no hope. On my circumstances, I couldn't see a way to overcome. I couldn't see a way to find peace. But if I ever started learning to put my eyes upon him, He's the one that can part a sea. He's the one that can stop the sun so Joshua can win a battle. He is the one that will make a way where there seems to be no way. He's the one that called me. He's the one that met me in those low moments of my life and began to bring me through. He's the one that has poured love on me when I know I didn't deserve it, and I know he'll see me through here. You realize that some of us don't praise because we're being controlled by our emotions instead of being led by the Spirit of God. And your emotions are holding you captive. So I was held um, by the emotions of hopelessness and discouragement because I focused on my problems, not my problem solver and Savior, Jesus Christ. I was focusing on how, and I'm trying to figure out how to solve all the issues that are before me instead of trusting and believing that Jesus Christ is the way and he will lead me through what is in front of me. So my faith was up. It was down. I struggled seriously with my emotions tossing me about because I was being led by them and they are deceptive and very chaotic if you're led by your emotions. And I was being pushed around with these things. It was attacking and affecting my work, my family, my relationships with God, and my health. Until I started learning to use praise in the midst of the trial. Until I started learning to focus on the Lord instead of focusing on what I can't control or change, like people. I can't make people do anything. I can't even make myself do some things. When I started focusing on the Lord and getting out of the noise and the negativity, and I started seeing the Lord and realizing you rule and reign over all creation. All things are done by your hand. And I put my trust in you. You are faithful. You are good. You are my covenant partner. My battles are your battles. You will make a way if I will follow and lead and walk with you. You hold my future in your hands. Nobody controls that. The more I focused on him, the more the internal of me changed. I'm seriously, it was like the clouds part and the sun starts shining inside of me. My mindset changed. And that's when I realized how deceptive it is. If you are being led by your emotions, you're being deceived. You're easy to deceive. Whatever you're victim to, whether it's pity or negativity or judgmentalism, you're being bombarded with it. And until you begin to fight with praise to get your eyes on the Lord and your trust in the Lord, you will be controlled by those things. See, praising the Lord until you come into trust. Praising the Lord until you, sometimes that takes a day. I'm not talking about I'm praying for 24 hours. I'm talking about throughout my day, I can feel the pull of the negativity. I've got to come back and declare who my God is, declare how faithful he is, declare how committed he is, declare what he's done in the past, declare who he's, what he's done in the people of the Bible, and begin to speak that over my life. But sometimes it may take a whole day of me doing that, and then it breaks. And you begin to really rest in, God's got me. God won't fail me. Sometimes it just takes a little time. 
Sometimes it's 10 minutes. But when I really want to stay in that place of trust with the Lord, the only way I can do it is by holding up who he is to my own soul, to the forces that are battling me, and declaring the goodness of my God. Now, here's the point. Most of us can praise God when it's easy, but a lot of us don't praise God when it's hard. And that's the reason because we need to use and understand the principle called the sacrifice of praise. The sacrifice of praise. Look at Hebrews chapter 13, 15. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips that openly profess his name. The terms sacrifice and praise don't look like they go together. Sacrifice talks about giving something at a great cost to, of ourselves. Praise sounds like joyful, happy, exuberant, and yet spiritually they very much come together. It's easy to praise the Lord when things look smooth and easy, but the times we need to praise the Lord the most are the times that it's the hardest. When our prayers don't seem like they're being answered, when we feel pressed on every side, when everything is screaming that something bad is going on, when God seems far away, that's the time we need to begin to learn to praise. To praise God in the times like that is when it requires a sacrifice. It requires a choosing of him instead of a giving in to the negativity. It requires a choosing to lay down that emotion, whether it's pity, complaining, fear, hope, choosing to say no to it and yes to focusing on the Lord. There's a battle that goes on in you. There's a sacrifice that you have to make, a choosing of God. Because as long as you give in to that negative way, it will control you. So there's this battle that goes on, and we choose to sacrifice that, that knee-jerk reaction, that instant way that we've always gone. I say no to it, and I choose to focus on the Lord. I choose to make it about the Lord. Even though everything is screaming, make it about me. And it's like, no, I choose to focus on Jesus Christ. I believe he will get me through the storm. I believe that I can fight and my faith will rise. I believe that in hope, not discouragement. I believe in peace and not the lies and the torment of the enemy. See, our praise of God is not based on our opinion of how things view. Look in the Bible. So many times it didn't look great, but that's when God began to come through. I, I hate the thought of giving up to the enemy when God was just getting ready to open the door. I, I love stories in the Bible where they were, they were being pushed and pushed and pushed, but they held on to God, and at the 11th hour, God comes through and brings the breakthrough. And so many people I watch in church, they've given up one, one area of life, one hope, one dream, one vision, one belief that God can do something great. They just give it up. They just give it up. Why? Because they were trying to believe him, then hell pushed against them. That, yeah, you're right. I could never do anything. And we give up. And what happens? Something dies inside of us. I love in the Bible, like Paul Rejoice in the Lord always, Philippians 4. And again, I say rejoice. This is a guy that's been thrown in prison. This is a guy that's been beaten for the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is a guy that served the Lord. Even other people begin to forget about him because he's now being jailed for his faith. And they've moved on to other people. And yet, he stays moving forward in the Lord. Why? Because he says, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I'll say it, rejoice. David writes, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Think about it if you're praising God throughout the day. Somebody just, just really hit your button. Lord, I thank you that I do not have to be controlled by that fear and doubt, that you love me, you'll never leave me, that you are with me, and that you are the one that will guard my heart and lead me forward. I don't want the enemy's bitterness, resentment. I want to walk in the sweetness of your love. I want my heart open to your Holy Spirit. David, all, I mean, he, he was run out. He's being unjustly persecuted. He's run out of his own country. He can't see his family. Even his wife was taken from him. He faced one thing after another, yet he's saying, let praise be continually on your lips. 
These guys kept the faith through the ups and downs of life because they offered God a sacrifice of praise. I want us to show you why you need to fight the fight of faith to offer God sacrifice of praise when it's hard. The first thing, the sacrifice of praise brings about the good God promised. In Jeremiah, it tells us that God has good plans for us. It's a hope and a future. And nothing can separate us from those plans. It doesn't mean things won't come against it. They will. There was a lot that will come against you walking out the breakthroughs, the blessings, the promises, and the things God has for you. But he gave you this. And it should be Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things, that we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Things will come against us. Battles will come. People will do hurtful things. But don't fear. Don't give up. Because nothing will keep you from the good God has for you if you keep your eyes on him and you keep going forward. The only way the enemy can take anything God has planned for you is if you give up. He can't steal it from you. He cannot take it from you. What he can do is tempt you to believe it's hopeless so you give up. That's all he can do. When I learned that, I realized I'm not giving up. I'm going to keep my eyes on the Lord and my hope in the Lord. And I'm telling you, to fight for the things of God, you'll be tempted numerous times to give up. To give up on that promise. To give up on that hope that you can change. To give up on that what he spoke over your child. To give up. And the only way you won't give up is if you learn how to praise the Lord. If you learn how to focus on God, if you learn how to exalt the bigness of God, the faithfulness of God, the goodness of God, the authority of God. It says in Galatians 6, 9, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time you will, say it, you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. The enemy keeps coming at you to give up, to give up. The weapon you have to shut him up is to hold up the goodness and the greatness and the glory of your God. Negative thoughts, negative feelings, hopelessness, fear, doubt, insecurity will all come. And it will try to get you to lose heart. I'm telling you, I've been in Kenya many times when those waves of those attacks come. This is ridiculous. You can't see a nation change. It's not going to happen. Oh, look at this hurdle. Look at this difficulty. You've got two groups fighting each other. It will never change. And I have to keep praising. You are the God that can begin to turn nations up. You hold nations in the hollow of your hand. And I begin to praise him. And you can see the hopelessness gets pushed back. And then I can go stand in a situation and the wisdom that I need to negotiate these pastors coming together or to speak and they're turning and releasing their hearts is there if I will praise him. You may be sitting in situations where hopelessness is right on the edge of everybody's tongue, in their mind. And the only thing that's going to get you to come through that is to praise him and hold up who God is. Putting my trust in him, that he who began this work will see it through, that Christ will never leave me. He is with me to guide me every step of the way. There's nothing greater than him. He's already defeated all the work of the devil. None of this confounds him. See, it's those stories in the Bible. Paul's beaten, he's jailed, he's forgotten, he's slandered, but God is still using him to this day because he never gave up. Joseph, his brothers sold him into slavery. He was faced great hardship, but he kept his faith and trust in God, and he rose into second command of Egypt. And he even said when he faced his brothers, Genesis 50, 20, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many should be kept alive as they are today. Friends, you're going to face stuff every day that tries to beat you down. Without praise, you'll lose heart. Without praise, the fire in you will die down. Without praise, the vision will fade away. Without praise, you'll give in to some form of despair. 
With praise, you will overcome. With praise, you will rise up to the challenge. With praise, you'll believe in the one that called you, that he will see you through. Why do I need to sacrifice the praise? Because the good that's promised to you, that's the only way you're going to take hold of it. Second, why do we need praise? Is because that's where the character and the maturity is built. The Bible tells us in James 1, 2, verses 2 and 3, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that in the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Romans says it this way, You can rejoice too when you run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops the strength of character, and the character of the strength of our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. See, the Bible tells us we're going to face trials. We're not in heaven. We're still in a sin-stained world that people are selfish and hurtful things happen. But when you face those hurtful things, you've got one of two choices. You either go negative, you'll complain, you'll gripe, you'll feed the negative hopelessness or despair that wants to be in your mind. You'll begin to this hopeless, I'll never be loved, it'll never happen, I'll never get there. Or you'll begin to focus on the Lord and begin to exalt who he is. And if you do that, he will then take the adversity you face and build the character so that you can carry the better things he has for you. He'll build the character. He'll build the focus to see, so you can see how to stay focused on him under pressure. He'll build the faith in you that can, doesn't wilt as soon as it gets hot. He'll build the love in you that can love people even when they're not loving you back. He'll build these things inside of you. So it's your choice. Go negative, feed the same garbage that is holding you captive, or begin to praise him and acknowledge him and turn to him. And then he will take the things the enemy means against you and work them for good. Do you hear me? The devil will use trials to feed the negative narrative in your head. No one loves me. They'll never get through this. I can never do anything with my life. God will take the trials to build the character and the purpose. It all depends when the trials come, what do you choose? Do you offer a sacrifice of praise or are you just murmur and complain? You see, it's in that moment under pressure, which one do you choose? Like sometimes I choose the negative one, but I recognize what I'm doing and I stop it. Stop. I'll literally even say, never mind. Stop. And I'll go into prayer. Or I start reading the word because what is reading the word? It turns my eyes to God reminds me who he is. I see so many people through the years that'll tell me things like, I don't believe in God. Why? Because I went through this hard thing. Da, da 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 So I don't believe in God. But I'll meet other people say, I believe in God. Why? Because I went through this hard thing and God met me there. And he became so real to me. I have people, I don't really serve the Lord. I just want to attend, get a little bit of nourishment, and then I go home. Why? Because I got hurt. I get other people that serve God through all the hurts, and they glorify him because they've learned to put their focus. I'm telling you, you'll face trials, but they're either going to sour you and begin to sideline you, or they're going to begin to raise you up that now you stand in character and maturity and begin to stand in things your family never stood in because you're letting the Lord begin to build you up to who he made you to be. It all depends on what do you do with the trial. Do I praise the Lord? I become stronger, more mature. My faith becomes more steady. Or do I complain and pity and whine? All of us have a negative knee-jerk reaction. All of us do. Am I beginning to cause that to die, or am I still feeding it? I really want to say this because I think some of us have been sidelined for a while, and if we would start offering to God praise when the pressure comes instead of the usual thing we do, we would begin to get back into the game, and God would begin to use our lives. Literally, I, there's a story in the Bible of Jeremiah. Oh, preaching goes so fast here. In Africa, I can go on forever and ever and ever. <laughs> I just look at the time. Okay. 
Jeremiah had lost hope, and he started whining and saying, I wish I'd never been born. Oh, it was so terrible the day my dad was told of my birth. And he's whining and complaining. And God comes to him and said, Jeremiah, if you'll stop speaking worthless words, I'll use you exactly as I said I would use you. And what strikes me about that is some of us have been speaking worthless words. If we will stop it, God will begin to use us exactly as he told us in the beginning of how he would use our lives.